China has ordered the U.S. consulate in the city of Chengdu to shut down a tit-for-tat move after its mission in Houston was closed. Live to Washington in a moment, but first, Lynette Lim explains Beijing's move. China's move to close the U.S. consulate in Chengdu has been described by them as a legitimate and necessary response to the unreasonable measures by the U.S. It has also put the blame squarely on the U.S., saying that the U.S. is responsible for the current situation in bilateral relations. Chi there's no official confirmation of the timeline for the closure of the U.S. consulate in Chengdu, but some reports say that it should be reciprocal, meaning that it'll get 72 hours to clear out, the same amount of time given to China's consulate in Houston. Now, as soon as this announcement broke, Chinese state media set up a live cam outside the Chengdu consulate. We're not sure if it would still be on come Monday morning as that's when the deadline is. Now the Chengdu consulate covers four provinces and one municipality. It is said to be an important post for the US when it comes to gathering information and monitoring Tibet and southwest China. Interestingly, the Chinese Council General in Houston reportedly said the consulate won't commit to a shutdown. This would be a direct threat of defiance to the order by the U.S. State Department. At the same time, China also responded to the fiery speech by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, in which he said that blind engagement with China has to stop and that Washington and its allies will have to induce China to change. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hua Chunying tweeted that Pompeo is launching a new crusade against China in a globalized world, and that this action is as futile as an ant trying to shake a tree. The Chinese Foreign Ministry also condemned Pompeo's remarks as being filled with ideological prejudice and Cold War thinking. It added that the development path that China has chosen has the support and backing of the Chinese people. It also said that while China has no desire to change the U.S., the U.S. too cannot change China. Lynette Lim, CNA, Shanghai. For more, let's speak to Simon Marks. Good morning, Simon. Always good to talk to you. Uh, look, with things heating up as they have been, the U.S. side was already bracing for this closure, weren't they? Yeah, there's no question that the U.S. priced in to the decision to order the consulate in Houston shut down, uh, that reprisals and retaliation uh, was absolutely guaranteed uh, from Beijing, and Beijing had made it very clear that retaliation was coming. I mean, I, I think they may be surprised that the Chinese have gone after Chengdu because the initial speculation here uh, was that they might close down the, Chi the American consulate in Wuhan, given that that was the sister diplomatic mission to the Chinese consulate uh, in Houston. There's no question that the Chengdu mission is a much larger mission uh, than the uh, consulate in Houston that's been targeted by the Americans. And as Lynette was reporting there, a very valuable listening post uh, for the United States as it uh, monitors human rights uh, and uh, also keeps an eye on other developments in places like Tibet. So uh, this is definitely going to hurt the United States. There is absolutely Absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, and we don't know if this is an end to the affair or whether now in some fashion the United States is going to fire the tennis ball back across the net 
at China. But certainly this is the end result uh, of uh, ongoing deterioration in the relationship uh, between Washington DC and Beijing. Increasingly heated rhetoric on uh, both sides and a determination by the Trump administration that it's time to turn a new page in the history uh, of that bilateral relationship and hold China to account uh, in ways that previous administrations, both Republican and Democrat, uh, the Trump administration contends, has failed to do. Exactly, Simon. So the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, he also made no attempts to dial down tensions in a key speech, you know, as we heard there just hours ago. So why continue stoking flames here? Well, I mean, the only possible good news in all of this, Glenda, is that that speech that was made at the Nixon Library in California several hours ago by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is the last speech in a series that have been made by the Secretary of State, the National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, and somewhat oddly, the U.S. Attorney General William Barr, who normally doesn't uh, get involved in uh, foreign policy issues. So there's a possibility that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, having, as he put it yesterday, rounded everything up for the American people in a bid to explain to them why it's so important for the United States now to lead a new alliance of free nations in demanding reciprocity, transparency and accountability uh, from China. It's possible that we may now be in something of a break uh, because there's no further speech currently planned. Uh, but by selecting the Nixon Library in your Belinda as the location to deliver that message, remember that President Richard Nixon uh, is remembered in foreign policy terms, at least, uh, for opening up the United States to the possibility of a relationship with China. And there was Mike Pompeo yesterday in the grounds of the Nixon Library describing President Xi Jinping as a true believer in bankrupt totalitarian ideology and telling the audience that the Chinese Communist Party is at its heart a believer in Marxist-Leninist ideology. I mean, he said that he didn't want to criticise Richard Nixon's legacy, uh, but he absolutely engaged in the wholesale rewriting of 50 years of policy towards China uh, on the part of the United States and basically said, Said, attempts at engagement have failed uh, and it's time to stop pretending that they can work. So uh, we're in a new dawn here. The Chinese and leaders of those free nations around the world to whom Mike Pompeo was appealing will of course be very aware that we're now I think 102 days is it away from uh, America's date with a presidential election and it may well be that the voters uh, reject President Trump, Mike Pompeo and the world view that they represent. But we're certainly in for a very interesting uh, 102 days between now and then. Inching, inching very, very much closer to that election on November 3rd. Simon, thank you very much for that. Simon Marks here in Washington, D.C.